Okay, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to this webinar on teaching fleet tactics uh, through RTS computer games. Uh, my name is Stefan Överlam. Uh, usually in the US, uh, the Ö is converted to an O for obvious reasons. Uh, I've spent most of my time uh, as a naval officer on board frigates uh, in operational positions, uh, as well as, uh, as a staff officer, having been embarked for uh, uh, some time on uh, Danish and American warships as a staff officer. Uh, I'm now teaching uh, naval tactics at the Royal Norwegian Naval Academy, which is a part of the uh, Norwegian Defense University College, which uh, uh, has campuses all over uh, Norway. Of course, the Naval Academy is in Bergen because uh, we, it's a very good thing to be close to the ships and the ships have to stay near salt water. Uh, so uh, if you can all hear me and see the presentation, I think we should just uh, get started. Uh, now, teaching maritime warfare uh, is uh, something of a tough call because uh, as naval, uh, naval combat is so destructive uh, and happens so seldomly, uh, we rarely get to practice uh, what, we, uh, what we are trying to teach. Uh, the core skills, uh, which, is, which are combat operations at sea. Now, uh, for, uh, for the Norwegian Navy, the uh, um, it's, it's starting to be 80 years since we were involved in any sort of naval combat. And this uh, means that we actually have very few people alive that can uh, reflect and engage uh, students about how uh, naval combat is uh, actually fought. Uh, but uh, in common with war games, Naval warfare is a struggle of wills and material uh, where the opposing sides, uh, time, space, and the operational area are essential factors. So uh, these are the elements of what we try to teach. Uh, it's also essentially a team effort. One of the best short, uh, short impressions of uh, how, uh, a sh especially, um, a ship should, should develop uh, tactical procedures is a very short piece by Frank Andrews written in 1958, where he says that the superior weapon operation of the people manning the platforms, which will be fixed given that naval platforms are expensive and uh, takes time to build and develop, uh, and the uh, victory or, uh, or uh, success will come to those who are able to use, uh, their, uh, use their equipment, their ships, their weapons, their sensors in the best way relative to the enemy. Uh, and this involves a lot of people. Uh, Especially naval warfare is a team effort uh, where different, uh, different segments of the uh, crew are uh, doing different jobs. Some, not, some are only indirectly related to the enemy. Uh, and thus, how the team works is an essential factor uh, in naval warfare. Uh, but how are we going to train people for uh, situations like this? Uh, this picture is now over 40 years old. Uh, it is the HMS Sheffield having been hit by uh, an exocet. Uh, but the superficially, it seems uh, very related to this situation, which is of a much newer date. Uh, and uh, both ships were uh, both ships were lost uh, after taking hits. Uh, 
especially in the last case of the cruiser Moskva, uh, we can only speculate as to the causes. Uh, but as uh, several uh, authors have uh, said, the readiness and situational awareness of the crews are uh, what will uh, what will give, give the best uh, chance of survival. In other words, stacking the odds uh, in your favor. Uh, so how can we teach people uh, something which very few living people has have actually practiced and uh, and uh, which uh, needs uh, reactions that are quick uh, and in and effective communication to uh, to the people on your team, uh, your shipmates, so to speak. Uh, I'm in finding a pedagogical and didactical platform for this. I'm gone to uh, Joe Biggs, uh, which has a very uh, well-formulated model for how a teaching learning activity should be. Uh, and it has to, uh, it has to uh, help people to want to learn. In other words, a theory why uh, environment. Uh, and the students have to see the learning objective as relevant and uh, achievable. Um, the activity, of course, uh, had better be uh, based on previously acquired relevant knowledge, uh, and not least that the students can be rel relevant and active actors, um, and also that they can uh, see themselves as being able to do the task. Uh, another central thing is that it contributes to self-reflection uh, and self-monitoring during and uh, also after the learning activity. And I've tried to make out some key words that, that we've tried to, uh, to take from this uh, model and work into our wargaming concept. Uh, mainly the teamwork, uh, on, which is a, a basic military unit uh, of about five to eight uh, people is a basic size for most, most military operations. Also in naval sub teams uh, in one dimension of warfare, for example, it's a common, uh, it's a common grouping. Uh, and to make the members of those teams work effectively together uh, and also to integrate and exchange information with other sub teams, uh, with uh, the whole combat team or the whole uh, engineering team uh, to use the whole ship uh, effectively is extremely important. Uh, to this wargaming is a natural uh, because uh, Wargaming involves people, decision-making, uh, and a struggle of wills. Uh, and if you put uh, teams of students against each other, this will hopefully reinforce their motivation to succeed. Uh, and also, it will be achievable as they, can, they know who the other side are, and they could probably beat them if they did their very best. Uh, so I think wargaming is a very good, uh, good method to use uh, for uh, this subject. Uh, that the subject is relevant uh, is a very easy one in teaching naval uh, tactics to officer cadets. Uh, because this is the whole basis for our profession uh, and what we are supposed to be able to do uh, if the time comes. Uh, so through these processes, the students feel relevant and in a small group, they are actually able to, uh, to, uh, to be important uh, players. It's not very easy to hide in a group of five. Uh, and, also, and finally, feedback uh, and uh, specifically 
uh, formative feedback on the process and possible ways to do better or other perspectives is extremely important to foster the self-reflection uh, and personal development that we hope to achieve uh, from um, our teaching, uh, teaching learning activities uh, at the Naval Academy. So that's the uh, didactical foundation which we're working on. Uh, concept of a whole. Following that, we use uh, terms uh, which we try to keep uh, throughout a whole course uh, or event of five, seven, eight, where we try to get uh, different specialties, uh, different competences to work together as a team for the entirety of uh, a course at the Naval Academy. Uh, we also use the uh, 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 the wargaming philosophy about uh, uh, about people, about uh, decision making, and uh, the struggle of wills, where the sides are at least cognitively uh, evenly matched. Uh, a part of uh, Naval war of uh, naval operations is also planning. It's a very important part, and we therefore allow people uh, an extended period for planning operations in their teams, uh, liaising with the teams of the same side uh, during a uh, war gaming session, and their planning and uh, their their testing of their courses of action can actually influence the resources that they are uh, allowed to uh, use in the, uh, in the uh, game. Uh, also feedback, feedback from uh, the game umpires, which will be uh, constructing the uh, whole game and uh, supporting and mentoring uh, the full class, but also mentors, uh, mentors uh, for each team. Uh, so if we keep to a strict definition of wargaming as, uh, as it's given in uh, wargame pathologies, uh, we are, <laughs> may, maybe the only sin is there is no human player per se, each player is a group of people who try to work together uh, to uh, achieve the uh, objectives of the game. Uh, after planning, uh, selection of uh, a plan for each team, uh, we play out uh, a tactical situation uh, in real time. Uh, umpires may set the time compression uh, and what is important is that there is only one or two operator decision, operator positions, uh, whereas uh, a team consists of uh, five, seven, even eight people. And uh, therefore, the input given by the operators uh, has to be the result of a group process. Uh, if not, it becomes a computer game and uh, not... Uh, a war game per se. Of course, following the game, uh, we do uh, first uh, group compilation of experience, but then uh, plenary sessions uh, where we assess and discuss the uh, decisions made, uh, the tactical evolution of the game. Uh, of course, uh, the possible operational and strategic significances of the tactical situations that happened in the game, um, about the teamwork within each uh, team, uh, and the emotional reactions, uh, uh, which surprised me when I started uh, working with this, uh, and also an um, uh, assessment of did we achieve the teaching learning aims that we uh, wanted to achieve. 
Uh, so this is the overarching uh, context. Uh, so from um, a hex encounter or matrix war game view, what is this uh, the real time uh, tactics, real time strategy uh, application in the platform that we use might seem uh, a little on the simulator side. Uh, however, uh, the uh, uh, real-time uh, simulation is really only a means uh, to simplify the reality uh, sufficiently enough to let the students focus on the tactical pro uh, uh, problems instead of the minutiae of course keeping people management uh, maintenance concerns and all the other uh, all the all the other items that uh, are usually uh, a problem in real shipboard action or in a hyper uh, realistic simulator like a um, Naviga navigation simulator, for example. So uh, the thing is for the students to enter the uh, magic circle of Huizinga uh, and to suspend disbelief uh, sufficiently to allow them to uh, put the full effort into the game and accept that the rules that are in the gaming platform are uh, the rules under which they will compete uh, uh, against the others, other side or sides uh, in the tactical conflict. Um, the other part of the uh, of the um, war games that we run is the planning. Uh, and they plan and execute uh, in the teams that they will use to. Uh, to uh, execute uh, their, uh, their tactical war game. Uh, and this allows them to achieve uh, ownership of their uh, plan uh, and also coordinate with other teams on the same side to get a joint. Uh, and uh, what we've noticed is that start the game platform uh, with the editor to set up many scenarios uh, for the uh, tactical game and play test uh, some of their anticipated situations on which uh, their plans uh, were dependent and test them in the gaming platform. Uh, a very good form of war gaming if the world were as simple as this uh, simulator is. Uh, now, gamification is uh, something that has uh, achieved some, uh, some fame in, uh, in, uh, in human science over uh, the last few years. Uh, one of the important things that it brings is uh, the will uh, to win and the promise that you might win if you do well. Uh, this is also something that is very common uh, traits among uh, officers and um, uh, officers candidates. We all want to win. So the fact that uh, uh, our students are competing against other students uh, is uh, a factor which makes them work that much harder at doing the best they can within the constraints of the mission uh, and the simulated world in which it is to be executed. Um, now, what a real-time simulator brings to a war game is uh, the fact that in uh, turn-based games or uh, hex and counter games, even uh, partly matrix games, although that's slightly uh, different. Uh, in a real-time simulation, the decisive engagement doesn't happen in the engagement phase. It might happen at any time. And the teams that have uh, achieved to have a sufficient situational awareness have maneuvered their forces into the proper pos uh, proper positions can 
effectively engage the enemy first, to quote Wayne Hughes. Uh, so we found that this real-time awareness teaches some very uh, basic and important skills in naval combat where uh, a decisive result uh, can uh, be achieved in a very short time. Uh, or on the other hand, uh, you and your crew can be in serious trouble within 90 seconds if uh, you've been on the short end of readiness, situational awareness or uh, capability. So this is really what the uh, real-time simulator uh, brings to the war game. Uh, and once the victory conditions are set, this means that uh, the game basically decides who wins, given the rules of uh, the world that, uh, that we're operating in, the game platform. Uh, and uh, instructors and uh, students can focus on formative feedback. What was the plan? What happened? Uh, how could we have done better? And what did we learn from this? Uh, when it comes to uh, the planning processes, we uh, usually divide the uh, teams into uh, two or more sides uh, uh, in a hypothetical uh, conflict. And uh, the basic size is, as I mentioned, five to seven students per team and one to three or even as much as six teams uh, per side. Uh, now, the teachers provide uh, a fictional geopolitical context uh, using uh, real world geography uh, and uh, an operational mission for each side, uh, also including an order of battle, uh, maybe uh, forecasted weather for the uh, duration of the uh, operation uh, and uh, rules of engagement to get to frame their uh, their planning process uh, and each team is also given a formation of units and a set of tactical tasks which they are to fulfill uh, we then allow the students to basically plan uh, the mission themselves giving them uh, a few formal uh, formal uh, briefs to uh, make sure that they've actually analyzed the mission and that they've formulated some possible courses of action and recommended uh, one. And in this process, they are able to interact with the instructors through a uh, uh, request for uh, request for information form, which you can see uh, on the bottom. Above is a simple uh, mission uh, mission statement uh, in uh, what I consider a relatively simple geography, although in uh, 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 in uh, normal uh, naval terms it would be uh, congested. Uh, littoral combat environment. Uh, and at the bottom of the screen, you can see the, uh, the uh, form that we use for formal communication, uh, both for game admin issues and also for uh, issue for uh, requests for clarification, requests for information or requests for support from uh, higher command. Uh, this will result in clarifications. It might also result in uh, operational resources being available to the, uh, uh, to, uh, the requesting team uh, if, it's, uh, if it's found uh, reasonable. Uh, so uh, there is no fixed, um, uh, fixed allotment of uh, operational resource points, which you find in some games, it is uh, just the umpire uh, say, uh, finding out if this is a, 
uh, uh, an okay request and uh, if it would be possible given this given the fictional scenario to get those kinds of resources uh, the other thing is, as I mentioned earlier, that the students actually use the gaming platform with the editor to play test elements of their plan from to find out uh, within the constraints of the game uh, uh, things as simple as uh, how many missiles do I, do I need to sink this and this platform uh, and how tightly will they have to be timed or how long time will it take me to sail from A to B if I use this, this, or this route? And how close can I sail to a naval mine without the, of this and this model without touching it off? Uh, and they actually do this. And uh, successful teams have play tested uh, extensively setting up their own anticipated scenarios uh, using the game platform. Uh, when it comes to conducting the operation, the game is uh, played in real time uh, with, uh, name, with uh, time compression as agreed by all teams to five times normal speed or ten times normal speed if there are actually no engagements happening. Uh, and we will adjust the, uh, adjust the time compression down to... Uh, uh, normal time, one second e equals one second, uh, if tactical action uh, and, uh, erupts at un un uh, unexpected times. Now, as I've said, this is about teamwork. So, so you can see from the bottom left corner, uh, the only uh, one of the, uh, of the students are actually uh, manipulating the game. The others view from uh, a projector or an observer um, observer window on another other, uh, PC or laptop. And uh, each team has to have a commander, uh, uh, an operational assessment guy, uh, intelligence, and also most elect to have uh, an inter-team uh, command and control uh, and, um, uh, control uh, function, which does report. phase uh, but you are uh, interacting with uh, the uh, uh, with uh, the people on your team and interaction with the opposing side and your allied teams will be in the game uh, now the gaming platform is basically uh, a tactical uh, naval warfare simulator, uh, with uh, which is based on uh, a commercial game, uh, but uh, refined for educational use. Uh, it allows you to uh, um, uh, multiple uh, operators in charge of. Uh, whatever platforms you would like in the database. And there is also an, an editor for uh, creating new uh, forces if what you have in the uh, standard uh, order of battle uh, is not sufficient. Uh, the geographical database uh, is, uh, com is uh, compiled with uh, the best available open source uh, data for altitude and depth. Uh, and uh, the um, simulator takes into account the curvature of the earth, weather, uh, water depth, and uh, uh, most of the basic factors uh, of uh, dealing with the sea and uh, 
uh, naval conflict at sea uh, without making it unduly complicated. Uh, so uh, each player controls one or more units, aircraft, uh, ships and or shore batteries, uh, harbors, airfields, uh, all the things that we uh, basically use in a naval air uh, uh, dimension uh, conflict. Uh, now the units, you don't have to stare the units by rudder command, uh, they have limited automatic functions like uh, they will follow a predefined track. Uh, they will take action if they're under attack in self-defense and uh, also do uh, basic collision avoidance. Uh, so the need for micromanagement except tasking each separate unit is, is very limited uh, and uh, picture dissemination, one of the maybe technically most challenging parts of uh, naval warfare, uh, is automatic uh, on the basic level. Uh, so if one uh, unit on a side sees it, uh, all their um, all their uh, friend uh, friendly uh, teams will also see it. Uh, this can of course be turned off if picture compilation and uh, fog of war are one of the more uh, one of the elements that you would like to practice in the given war game. So uh, hopefully this will allow the teams to focus on uh, the tactics, on uh, picture compilation, on maneuvers, and on effective engagement, not. Uh, micromanage managing uh, specific units, although uh, managing an aircraft carrier with uh, 70 aircraft can be uh, challenging, as you can see uh, from the, uh, the graphic uh, graphic on the uh, right hand side with uh, a huge complement of uh, of uh, aircraft. Now, for this to be uh, effective as a teaching learning activity, uh, feedback is uh, essential, uh, as both Biggs and maybe especially Hattie and uh, Timurli uh, have pointed out the feedback and especially the formative feedback on how the process went, different possible approaches, what we can learn uh, from this, uh, which is free from the uh, summative feedback that you will get from uh, an exam or the um, results or, or your uh, results scoring on, uh, on a course. Uh, this is feedback about uh, how you could do better. And it's also throughout the whole process uh, and we try to have dedicated instructors to uh, provide both uh, game-wide uh, feedback to the teams uh, and also uh, mentors for each team, uh, which can uh, follow the intra-team communication and, and group dynamics, uh, both during the planning process um, and also give feedback uh, before the start of the game and between the game sessions. And of course, also in the, uh, uh, in the group sessions leading up to the uh, plenary assessment of how we did and what we learned from this. Uh, as I've talked about earlier, the uh, plenary uh, discussions allow us to pick out the uh, chief experiences uh, discuss how this might have gone uh, in a conflict in, in the real world, uh, and also the operational and strategic implications of uh, the players' uh, players uh, actions. It's important that this happens uh, at the end, uh, so they're actually allowed to focus on the uh, 
tactical scenario at hand in the uh, uh, when they're planning and conducting uh, the scenario. So, uh, how uh, does this work? Does it work? Uh, uh, well, the experience as reported by the students is that they uh, think that it's challenging at first, uh, but on engaging with, uh, uh, with the game and especially in competing against the other teams, uh, they gain uh, almost immediate emotional and intellectual experience of what it means to use the planning process and to lead and manage this uh, planning process. And by simulating the tactical situation, uh, they get an immediate response to what their plan was and uh, their disposition and their, con and their conduct of uh, the operation, uh, especially since the opposing side is not an all-knowing AI or, uh, or a commander who has spent 15 years at sea, but usually uh, students uh, of the same age and, uh, with, the same, uh, and with the same knowledge uh, as their opponent. Uh, through guidance and feedback, uh, students uh, are allowed to uh, take that as uh, advice and do something about and alter their course of action or go on uh, with their plan. Uh, the maybe the main thing about uh, engagement is the competition uh, between the teams because. Uh, the different the outcome is different every time. I've played maybe the same scenario uh, five or six times, and it usually evens out who wins. Uh, and in my experience, the side that wins is the one that uh, is most able to effectively uh, position their forces and not the least have a good internal dialogue in order to make them um, see when is the decisive moment and uh, to get their forces uh, into position for, uh, for an effective engagement. So on the, on the right side, just a few uh, examples, some of it in uh, the beautiful uh, language uh, with uh, immediate experiences uh, on uh, from from the students, uh, one of the most one of the best insights that I ever had was the uh, uh, top citation where one uh, student said that oh, well the mission is easy as long as no one is trying to kill you all the time, uh, and uh, the uh, appreciation of the real time. Uh, simulation is usually much better on after some experience, uh, which will reward those students who use the gaming platform actively to uh, play test uh, their courses of action. Uh, just a uh, quick example of uh, our uh, of one of our scenarios. This was actually played, excuse me, <coughs> in uh, January as part of our, uh, of our uh, tactics course. Uh, of course, uh, the real world geography uh, used uh, is not in any way intended to uh, offend any uh, nationality or uh, state. This is uh, this is all to set the scene for a uh, for a teaching learning activity. Uh, of course, the uh, different fictional uh, fictional states that inhabit the Aegean in uh, this scenario uh, are known to uh, known to many. Uh, this is in fact based on uh, Wayne Hughes' classic. 
uh, Fleet Tactics and Naval Operations, uh, the third edition, where he describes the Battle of the Aegean. Uh, in this, uh, a disgruntled Green Republic uh, has uh, seen fit to uh, retake uh, a few islands along their littoral, which they feel is rightfully theirs, uh, against a weakened Cyan uh, Republic, uh, whose uh, objective is to be seen as part of a club of democratic states. Uh, but defini definitely stop a militarily stronger uh, Green Republic push uh, for an invasion of what they see as their homeland. Uh, placed in the middle is the uh, Ultramarine Federation uh, with a carrier battle group and uh, an Ultramarine and uh, a Western Alliance uh, surface task group. Uh, with attached submarines, uh, which has as a mission to uh, affect a green regime change by precision strange, by precision strike, sorry, uh, while not being seen uh, as an aggressor. This is all set out in uh, typical military lingo as an operational tasking with uh, tactical tasks for each of the six formations. Usually we divide the, uh, uh, the players of, uh, uh, of each side as uh, into an air component and a naval component, uh, component uh, team. Uh, in Ultramarine's case, we have the uh, carrier battle group and the uh, surface, uh, surface force commanders. Uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, teams is set as the supported commander, and there is a passive uh, common superior, uh, which allows the uh, supported commander and the other and the teams of one side to act with some tactical freedom within the uh, framework given in the tech in the uh, operational tasking. Uh, now, this game was played uh, on site at the Naval Academy uh, with each team in separate rooms. And there was no uh, allowed movement between the rooms uh, when uh, the game was active. So uh, all communication had to happen on agreed channels. Uh, for this game, we also used two uh, game umpires for uh, keeping track of the general run of the game and acting as a uh, common superior. Uh, and also we had uh, one uh, mentor for each team whose main task during the game uh, was uh, observation uh, to give feedback on the group dynamics of, uh, of each team. Uh, each team had uh, some goals set out in their operational tasking. Uh, in between the umpires, we had set some rather more digital, uh, uh, digital win and loss conditions in between ourselves. Uh, this worked well. Uh, the ultimate winner was uh, the Ultramarine Federation uh, uh, teams, uh, although uh, uh, when we had the break in between sessions, we usually give the students the uh, majority uh, vote to see if uh, they want to continue on the same mission uh, during the break or if they want to restart and maybe uh, try out some other course of action. Uh, uh, but uh, during the break, the uh, Ultramarine supported commander actually voted to uh, restart as he thought he had lost uh, some critical resources to his uh, goal achievement. So the perception of what's happening in the game uh, as there is no victory, uh, victory point counter or little tangible uh, evidence that you 
actually are doing the right thing uh, is, is, is challenging to, to the students. Uh, one common allegation against simulators uh, in uh, teaching uh, teaching tactics and uh, using it as a war game is that it quickly becomes uh, a sort of click game where the uh, units, resources, and the stakes have no say. Uh, this is not my experience uh, using this framework uh, and this game platform. Uh, I've actually had to give uh, some counsel to students who uh, were uh, depressed at the losses they were taking uh, while all the operational assessment um, assessment uh, uh, results compiled by their staff said that they were doing the right thing and that they were on target. Uh, so quite the opposite my experience is that the uh, the uh, use of a real-time uh, game with the teams isolated from each other uh, actually facilitates uh, exposing the students to uh, the stress of, uh, of uh, combat operations and uh, sense of loss when they lose uh, own or allied units. So that was uh, uh, the example. Uh, and just to uh, give you some idea of the uh, enthusiasm and immersion uh, that the students have put into this, uh, this is totally outside, uh, uh, outside any um, official uh, teaching and learning activity that uh, with this war game, uh, but the students actually made uh, a series of fake news and propaganda to support the uh, to support the uh, view that their side were in the right, complete with uh, uh, with fake official Norwegian uh, news uh, um, uh, news headers and uh, commentaries from both military and civilian academics as to what was actually happening. Uh, so cadets very much engaged with uh, the geopolitical setting and uh, did a very good job at, uh, the, uh, uh, at the civil military engagement and uh, public affairs sectors of uh, um, an operational campaign, which uh, really is outside the uh, the frames of the activity, but really added to the uh, to the atmosphere uh, and uh, the will to immerse uh, into uh, the game and do their and uh, do their best. Uh, uh, and this was totally unexpected, uh, and it has happened on repeated occasions throughout uh, throughout the uh, years that we've been running uh, this model. So, uh, what's the way ahead for this? Uh, I won't bore you with the merc mercantile or contractual uh, problems that we're facing. We're using this now as a uh, research and development uh, uh, project in order to see how uh, this works. Uh, uh, but the real-time simulator uh, the platform uh, as a war game clearly has some uh, uh, promise in teaching naval tactics. Uh, however, it is not the only and uh, war game format that we should use. Uh, the picture is uh, from another format, which we usually use before we go to the full complexity of the real-time simulator. Uh, it is a uh, 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 Kriegspiel with uh, counters and uh, floor carpet. Uh, this one from uh, uh, from a littoral setting at the northern tip of Norway. Uh, 
uh, with an umpire and sequential moves. Uh, and actually what we found is that the floor show is very good at introducing concepts, possible choices, but maybe not into the minute of maneuvers of picture compilation uh, and uh, massing for uh, an effective engagement. Uh, so this also has a place. We also use uh, matrix games for the uh, for the higher operational uh, level and political military uh, strategic uh, level uh, and often in uh, in with uh, s with uh, scenarios that are similar to the ones we use for the uh, for uh, the uh, tactical uh, game uh, the mentoring uh, format and how we actually do uh, observation and feedback for the group with groups we've actually uh, found out that the internal working of the teams are perhaps the most interesting uh, interesting uh, piece of this uh, format of war game uh, we've not exactly landed how uh, to do the mentoring process as effective as possible, uh, both during planning uh, and execution. Also, it would be interesting to see them uh, play against uh, students uh, and uh, cadets from other educational uh, institutions, especially in uh, professional uh, military education and maybe naval academies. Uh, and also uh, Air Force uh, academies uh, to see how, if we could uh, get some synergy from different views of naval and uh, air power uh, and maybe get a different uh, angle from this. Uh, we've had a few uh, games with the US Coast Guard Academy. Uh, however, uh, the uh, stresses of uh, uh, COVID and increasing demands on when our courses are to be uh, conducted during the year has given us some limited flexibility uh, with uh, this testing because it is an immersive process and should be part of uh, a full course with operational uh, planning and tactics uh, as uh, at the core of the curriculum. So uh, this concludes uh, uh, includes, uh, my brief. So if you have uh, uh, any questions, I'll be happy to answer to the best of my ability. Hey, Stefan, that's great. Thank you. Um, as I let other people throw in their questions, I guess the first question I would have is, what is some advice that you would give to other instructors in similar situations, teaching cadets or other professional military in the use of um, RTS computer games, but also wildly war games in general? Uh, well, the key thing is uh, you have to engage with uh, where the students are, I think, uh, and also uh, I think that the, the big uh, principle of an effective teaching learning uh, activity is very good. You have to uh, make them interested in learning. Uh, competition is, uh, is between uh, peers is one thing, but, but really the main thing is to uh, engage the students. Uh, that is, can be hard with a group of 50, 60, and especially in uh, large academies, several hundred, but I think that the uh, creating a framework where they can effectively work together as a team uh, is very important uh, in order to master this and also especially to master something as complex as a uh, real-time tactics game with a uh, hundred units and start slow we usually uh, let them we usually let them start with a very simple uh, single dimension uh, tactical problem and let them fool around however 
actually the combination of uh, engagement and working together on a common plan while getting access to the uh, scenario builder and letting them game out their own problems, finding the specifics of the orders of battle, and in the process, getting knowledge about different naval, naval and air, uh, and also shore-based uh, weapon systems and sensors, has proved to be very effective. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, uh, students who have almost no knowledge of uh, uh, naval warfare or uh, ships or aircraft have come out of the course with a genuine interest and knowledge about these things just by working on the problems themselves. So it's all about getting that good uh, uh, good working process where the team is where the team members are mutually responsible to each other for getting a good result and of course keeping grading uh, out of all these wargaming uh, war gaming, uh, events and exercises because if they're supposed to learn from it uh, it's very hard if you at the same time have to uh, grade them and tell them how well they did, and this will have real world consequences. It's about learning outcomes, not grading students. So I guess the next question is, how many times do cadets get to fight the scenario or engage with the scenario per se? Do they get a second or third run at the same scenario or not? Uh, it depends generally uh, in the general tactics course. Uh, they uh, get maybe uh, one or two uh, tries at the single dimension, uh, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, anti-air warfare, single dimension problem. Uh, and then maybe we go into an uh, asymmetric scenario with uh, a time of crisis with strict ROEs and uh, clandestine forces, uh, which allows them to think really about uh, what is a good plan. Uh, and then to the full-fledged uh, tactical scenario, which we usually uh, use uh, with a floor show or uh, a big map where they uh, can do sequential moves first to uh, get to the concept. Uh, now, during the actual execution of a full tactical game, they uh, we usually play one session before lunch and the other session after lunch, uh, and they are allowed to vote, as I said, if they could, if they want to restart the mission or if they want to continue, uh, continue as they do. And uh, as I've said, it, the sides that ultimately wins are rarely the ones that vote for uh, vote to continue on the uh, given scenario. So on that question, how do you determine which scenarios you use for which classes or in what context? Uh, this depends. Um, basically, we use this game for uh, several courses. Uh, the full game that I've described here is for uh, about uh, 40, uh, 40 students. Uh, but for example, uh, we're teaching the uh, advanced uh, uh, petty officers uh, course now. Uh, at the same time, our uh, tactical center has uh, requested that we facilitate uh, operational planning uh, and teaching for their students, uh, which gives us a scenario of uh, where we have 80 uh, students. Uh, and this means that we will have to give a larger game with uh, roles for uh, for uh, for uh, for all teams. So more coalitions and uh, and uh, more complicated uh, operational and strategic uh, things in the background. 
Uh, so it's basically scalable. Uh, the scenarios that we use are using always fictive countries, usually color keyed uh, and real world geography. So they're basically only limited to uh, what the game does well, um, basically rapid naval warfare uh, and uh, the imagination of the, uh, of, uh, the teachers. Uh, usually we have some theming that uh, that suits well with uh, with uh, current world event events, but it's actually more keyed to what we need and what the specific uh, learning objectives of each scenarios uh, of what each of the specific learning aims of each uh, exercise is then. Uh, by any other and the number of, of students that we will have to facilitate for than anything else. So what are some of the challenges that you mentioned before about uh, instituting uh, wargaming with large RTS or manual quick spiels into the curriculum? Uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, it you have to create this positive environment where the students actually engage uh, with the counters, with the gaming board, uh, with the gaming platform, uh, and actually accepts that this magical circle, this, these rules of the game, to uh, quote Andrew Gordon, uh, are actually the constraints by which this uh, competition and this learning activity is uh, are, are governed by. Uh, so uh, that takes time. Uh, and also, uh, it's no doubt that it's much more labor intensive than uh, basic lectures. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, before uh, starting war games as uh, an integral part of my courses. I could usually teach uh, teach a course alone. Now uh, we use up basically one week uh, for eight people for the full tactical game described in the battle for the GN scenario. Uh, so it's time intensive, uh, requires a lot of uh, especially mentoring and feedback uh, feedback skills for the uh, for the mentors, and of course, a very sound working knowledge of, of naval warfare for the uh, for the umpires and game designers, and also a sense of how will this play out? Because if it's you can perfectly well create a totally imbalanced scenario, which wouldn't really be fair or fun. It has to be fun. So on that topic of uh, fun, how do you work towards making it more fun while retaining the educational value? Uh, I haven't encountered that problem uh, because the students, they take this as a, they, they have the whole week to do this exercise so they can uh, immerse in that uh, and uh, uh, they actively uh, go out and propagandize for their side and the humorous fake news articles that they produced. Actually, it was uh, an exchange of 10 uh, different, uh, different postings. So I don't try to make it fun, but they seem to manage that all on their own. Uh, I don't know how many of you were uh, local area network uh, enthusiasts, but the thrill of uh, hearing the victory yell from one cubicle while uh, another team collectively moans at a decisive engagement is really uh, a motivator. And yes, they are allowed to be satisfied with themselves if, uh, if they've won. And they're generally very courteous to each other and good at drawing the uh, lessons learned out of the uh, tactical scenario, but the, the spirit of it, uh, of winning or losing, I talked about the emotional experiences. It, 
I really didn't think that it would be uh, such a strong motivator, but it seems that the uh, real time uh, stress of watching and contributing to the team's effort in the uh, simulator is actually a very powerful motivator, uh, especially when they made the plan themselves. So one of the question asks, is there a common student profiled or field of study for students who elect to take this class? Like, for example, are there more humanities, history majors, or is it part of a particular uh, specialty at the uh, university, or is it open uh, generally? Mm, uh, this time we uh, provide the course to uh, officer cadets at the Naval Academy uh, and other courses to uh, the uh, and other courses to our uh, advanced uh, petty officer uh, courses. The courses in naval tactics are are not generally open to the uh, to the uh, to the public, and you're basically uh, have to be uh, approved as an officer candidate uh, in order to uh, to take these uh, naval tactics uh, courses. However, there are, uh, we uh, have some, uh, we are doing some experience, uh, experiments in that direction as well. Uh, now for the first uh, time, we have a, uh, a master's student, a Norwegian, uh, on, uh, who is uh, doing a master's uh, thesis at, a, at an Australian university uh, who has a uh, practice period at the Naval Academy, and uh, uh, this student will participate in the uh, in the uh, war game exercise that the uh, advanced petty officer course will be conducting with the uh, tactical action officer course of the Norwegian Navy. So that's the first, and uh, I'm very interested in uh, in her experiences. So. Uh, continuing that question is, so currently it seems like most of your simulations is, uh, and war games and scenarios focus on NATO-ish uh, formations, fighting other NATO-ish formations. Uh, do you have any scenarios or case studies or even plans to look at asymmetrical you know, engagements where one force looks very different from another, uh, whether that is in capabilities or um, the country itself? Uh, yes, uh, we've done a number of uh, those, uh, especially one uh, very uh, interesting asymmetric scenario, which was uh, written by uh, one of our foremost uh, foremost uh, experts on uh, use of clandestine and uh, asymmetric methods. Uh, in a, a crisis situation below the, the war threshold, uh, where uh, basically one side had some very specialized capabilities and uh, then a lot of uh, basic merchant ships, uh, which was a really, really uh, interesting game. Uh, also, the uh, geography and the units you can use are from the whole world and you can design your own uh, as well. Uh, so we've had uh, we've had uh, uh, scenarios where none of the sides have uh, looked like NATO or acted like NATO. So I have a broader question. It says, has the Norwegian Defense University or the military academies partnered with any U.S. policy schools in staging war game strategic? exercises or battle simulations, essentially an effort to increase knowledge, awareness, and experience for tomorrow's policymakers in a joint operational readiness context. Uh, on this platform, uh, we have uh, collaborated in uh, the early days with the, US, with the US Coast Guard Academy, and they are also using, uh, using uh, the Vantage uh, platform. Uh, we are in the process through uh, participation in, uh, in uh, national uh, Scandinavian and international conferences uh, to uh, discuss uh, this. Uh, we have not participated in any joint higher level uh, operational wargaming, but as 
uh, those of you well versed in wargaming theory probably have noticed there are a lot of uh, of uh, American sources to this. Uh, this is mainly because we work a lot with uh, with the U.S. and uh, especially the U.S. Navy has a huge tradition in uh, war gaming, which one can draw some very good lessons from. So on that note, what kind of collaboration would you like to see if you could have any kind of you know, partnership you wanted with U.S. or other NATO partners? Uh, it would be very uh, interesting if we could find the time to, at the same time, uh, maybe uh, give uh, the same war game to students of uh, two, uh, two different, uh, especially naval academies or air force academies, and to double up so we play two games with uh, where we swap the sides of each uh, of each conflict and see how that will impact it because uh, we can play this distributed over the network but the uh, uh, togetherness of the experience uh, has seems through the games that I've conducted to be very much greater if they are physically present uh, at the same location uh, so but the the culture of this uh, so I've not tried it a lot outside of the Norwegian Navy uh, would be very interesting to see how cultural factors uh, and uh, impact uh, the results in the war game. So I know the, the presentation was about RTS computer games, but you mentioned your manual quick spiel. Uh, can you expand a little bit more of how the game is run in terms of design and play? Uh, we uh, basically have, it's uh, something we inherited from the tactics center uh, where we have a huge floor mat uh, featuring Northern Norway. Uh, we have a set of uh, 3D printed pieces of uh, um, in common, uh, common Norwegian, uh, NATO, and uh, a large easterly neighbors uh, units. And uh, what we basically do is we put them through uh, a shorter uh, planning segment that we would use for the, uh, for the tactical simulation. Uh, but basically, they formulate uh, two courses of action and select one. Uh, so we flip a coin as to which uh, side will, uh, will act first. Uh, they deploy in accordance with what they've written on a sheet of paper uh, before the game. Uh, flip a coin which sides moves first, and then it's alternating turns. Uh, we use distance and uh, maybe umpire intervention to judge whether detections have been made uh, and um, to, to judge the results of an engagement. The, we usually flip a coin or roll a die uh, and an umpire will uh, use uh, experience to, uh, to evaluate what the odds uh, in approach to, to that die roll would be so it's basically a Kriegspiel with uh, with uh, an umpire and the conductor. So we usually do that with two teams and uh, uh, one game conductor and an umpire. All right, great. Uh, I think one of our last questions asks: Have you uh, or are you considering developing a real time strategy computer game with other stakeholders within the Norwegian total defense model? Uh, we have talked about it uh, uh, as uh, uh, one of we have the uh, responsibility for uh, for producing uh, logistics officers for the whole Norwegian defense organization, adding uh, logistics and land units to uh, the simulation uh, has been brought up on numerous occasions. Uh, However, as naval and air combat usually is about hours, uh, minutes, and seconds, uh, 
on on land uh, especially things move a lot slower and movement is more complicated uh, so we have talked about it at the moment it's uh, it's nothing more than loose talk because the uh, the, how this should look without losing anything of the immediacy and speed of uh, uh, a naval above water warfare engagement uh, isn't easy to, to bridge with the uh, days and weeks of uh, an, an, a land component uh, advance. Yeah, that's one of the challenges with a lot of the combined arms sort of RTS models. Um, one other thing I will say is, do you have any last comments for our speakers or where they can find you and contact you if they want to learn more about your efforts? Uh, you'll probably post this out on the net and I'll also post my uh, contact details uh, for those who, who would be interested. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll probably find the time for uh, a written or uh, voice chat for those who, who are interested in learning more about how we do things. Perfect. Uh, and we can uh, toss his contact information in the chat for everyone who is watching uh, currently live. Uh, for those who are watching this afterwards, uh, you can reach out to the Goose email and we will try to forward your correspondence to our speaker. Um, on that note, Stefan, thank you for your time and your generosity. I know it's probably late uh, there uh, in Norway. We appreciate your time and your uh, expertise in sharing what you're doing with your cadets. I know it was a pleasure meeting you uh, in Bergen earlier this year and having you drive me around all day. I really appreciate it. Um, and hopefully we at Georgetown can collaborate with you all at the Norwegian Military Academy as well. And we're looking forward to it. Very welcome and very happy to talk to you all. Uh, hopefully, we uh, some of us can meet at some later date and probably share some experiences with wargaming. Thank you.